defend this democracy, particularly, you raised quite correctly, in the context of the military takeovers that have been taking place, particularly in West Africa. But I think we've got to understand this about the West Africa situation. You know, uh, a few years back, you remember we had to work with, the, uh, with Cote d'Ivoire, Ivory Coast, Cote d'Ivoire to help them to get sorted out. And one of the things that we found was that there was an agreement with France signed at the point of the independence of Cote d'Ivoire that France would maintain a military barracks in Abidjan, the capital. And the commander of the French troops, in any situation where he felt the security of Cote d'Ivoire or the security of France was threatened, he had the power, sovereign power, a French general, to take over the public station, broadcasting, and announce whatever he liked. It's one of the agreements, one of the 12 or so agreements, that not only Cote d'Ivoire, but many countries of the Francophone, the Francophone countries that signed with France at independence. Mali, Mali just now, has just repudiated all of those agreements. I think there were 11 or 12 of them, which include prescriptions about when you've generated a foreign currency, bank it in Paris. Yeah. And Paris, the French franc then, would guarantee your currency, CFA. Part of what is happening uh, in, uh, in West Africa Palisa, as you can see, is a rebellion by young officers against French neocolonialism. It's not only military coups to remove uh, some elected president, but these young soldiers are saying our politics since independence has respected this junior relationship with France. That must end. So you see the big confrontation between these countries and France. It has to do with ending, the, like the agreements I've talked about, that you'd have a French general based in Cote d'Ivoire who has actually the power to intervene in Cote d'Ivoire as he liked. So it's, it's an anti-neocolonial rebellion. It has got this element, you are quite correct, of a removing elected presidents. How does the continent deal with that? Well, you know the OAU has a standard policy, as you, as you mentioned, uh, against illegal changes of government. So, the military governments don't get recognized. But we have a particular consequence now where Mali, Niger, Burkina Faso decide that they are walking out of ECOWAS. Now that can be a positive development. What is to be done? It's not a question that we can answer here. But I think, again, I'm trying to say it's necessary for us to understand the objective reality. What actually is happening? It's not just young soldiers who are hungry for power and therefore remove this elected president. No. That's why they talk about Thomas Sankara. Sankara took power by coup d'etat. He was a soldier. But Sankara understood this particular issue the need to destroy, destroy and defeat neocolonialism. And that's what these young soldiers are saying. 
What do we do with them? What does Africa do with them? I think Africa is in, in, in challenge a problem answering that issue, answering that question. Uh, Again, you see, with regard to these issues of uh, our need properly to understand what are we dealing with. It relates, for instance, to the matter you mentioned, Palisa, of uh, the situation in the eastern part of the Democratic Republic of Congo. That conflict. I'm, I'm, I'll repeat myself what I've said publicly. That the Congo, like all of us, we inherited colonial boundaries. And when the colonialists drew up the boundaries of the Democratic Republic of Congo, they included in the eastern parts of the Congo populations that were in Rwanda speaking. This is a Congolese in terms of those colonial borders. But the problem for us and problem for the Congolese is that certainly even during the days of Mobutu, they did not, did not want to recognize the Rwandese who were Congolese as Congolese. You even had a formation there in the Eastern Congo of a military group, a militia, which was called the Mai Mai. The Mai Mai, was, was, whose purpose was to drive away these Rwandans back to Rwanda. And Mobutu was encouraging that. That problem persists to this day. As you know, in the Congo, the DRC is a very big country. And one of the challenges since the return of democracy, which was there before, it persists, is the footprint of the government from Kinshasa is not necessarily strong everywhere in the country. So in the Kivus, this is part of the con problem, in the Kivus in the Far East, That's why you have the M23. It's because the Rwandan people, the Banyamulenge in the Eastern Congo, have for many decades felt this, that they don't have the protection of the government in Kinshasa. So they need to protect themselves. In addition, you've had this challenge uh, of the people who committed the genocide in Rwanda, then they ran away into the Eastern Congo. So they are also there. Some of them involved in all sorts of schemes and naturally to try and overthrow the government in Rwanda. I'm saying that the, the, the first, my view, is the first part in terms of dealing with the crisis in the Eastern Congo is recognizes that the Banyamulenge are Congolese. The Rwandan-speaking section of the population of the Congo is Congolese. And therefore must be protected by the government of the Congo like all the population of the Congo is entitled to protection by the government. That's a starting point. And then this issue has to be dealt with. Then what about the interests of Rwanda in the Eastern Congo, about the Rwandans, this group that con con committed the suicide, genocide, as well as these Rwandan-speaking people. How do you regulate that relationship? But I'm saying the principal responsibility falls on the government of, of the Congo to protect the Rwandan-speaking population of the Eastern Congo, of the Kivus. I think an understanding of those issues, why the coups d'etat in West Africa, 
widest commotion in the Congo. We must, fortunately we are, as members of this particular school, as it was explained, we must be the first ones to understand the objective reality. What is the reality we are dealing with? Not necessarily to be, by, to be bought by slogans. It's popular sayings. Because they are popular, therefore they must be true. That's not necessarily correct. This podcast was brought to you by BG Media App and BarGlobal.net. Please subscribe, like, and share this video. It does help support our productions. Also, please download the BG Media app to access the best works of the world's authors rendered in audiobooks, along with great experience through music, podcasts, and vodcasts.